Welcome to Jordan's Journal. I'm Representative Jordan, and thank you for joining us today. Today I have a special guest, um, Jadine Urasaki from Department of Transportation. She is the Deputy Director, and I'd like to introduce her to you. Aloha, everyone. Uh, thank you, Representative, for having me here today. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm the Deputy Director for the Department of Transportation. I oversee all of our capital improvement projects for our highways, airports, and harbors division. Um, it's my pleasure to be here to talk about some of the projects that are impacting your area as well as uh, a lot of the constituents uh, that drive on our freeways. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I know one of the first one that's going to be coming on board, which we just had a groundbreaking, I think, last week. Time slipping. I think like last week, and that would be the PM Contraflow Lane. Yes. Could you explain a little bit about the history of that and um, what that project entails? Sure. Um, we have our PM Contraflow. Um, it's a long-awaited project. Uh, mm -hmm. Started many, many years ago, uh, and we've gone through you know our procurement, uh, the protests, and a lot of the contractual issues in order to get to where we are today. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did have our groundbreaking um, actually about two weeks ago and uh, we did the blessing and it's a two-phased project okay it's you know basically it's an 80 million dollar project that uh, will encompass both the deck repairs that we need to do both on the inbound and outbound lanes of the Waimalu and the Pro City Viaduct uh, these are more substantial these are full deck repair work that we'll be doing okay. versus the checkerboard patches people have been seeing us working on from Makakilo to Kaimaki mm. Um, those were really minor um, work that was being done that was just replacing rebar. Okay. Uh, this is full deck repair, which we're replacing the deck itself on the top side uh, so okay. that uh, we can make sure that it's strengthened before we do the PM contraflow itself. So this work on the, the uh, PM, uh, in terms of the deck repairs, we will be starting on the outbound lanes uh, by the Leeward Community College area and it's the outbound lanes but we're going to be going inbound to do the work and okay. then we're going to do a, it's going to take about six months then we're going to do that horseshoe, horseshoe turn and come back on the inbound lanes going outbound mm -hmm. and that will take another six months but when we come back on the inbound lanes uh, which will be early part of next year mm -hmm. that's when we'll be starting the PM Contraflow project as, uh, as well which is the phase two portion oh okay mm -hmm. so it's actually like two projects folded into yes. one? In order to do the PM Contraflow, the deck has to be, you know, sound and, and strengthened. And so this work has to get done first. Mm -hmm. So we'll handle the Waimalu and the Pro City viaducts. And it's, you know, over 110,000 square feet of, of work that's going to have to get done. Wow. It's pretty substantial. Um, right now, um, the contractor's doing the preliminary work um, mm -hmm. in terms of the soundings and the, the noise variants that we're proceeding to try and get with the Department of Health. And uh, thereafter, we'll start the work. Um, we look to start, uh, we wanted to start earlier. We're still going through that process, and so hopefully we can start um, by end of this month. Oh, that would be really good. Yeah. So when was the last time that there was strengthening done on this well, <laughs> roadway? Uh, uh, you know, this, this road, uh, this freeway viaduct, um, you know, has never been really substantially replaced or repaired um, since it was built wow. in the 70s and mm -hmm. so basically we've done some patch repairs um, as I mentioned earlier from Makakilo all the way towards uh, Kaimaki. Right now we're doing that Kaimaki work going um, t uh, westbound okay. uh, and uh, basically it's checkerboard work which is basically the subsurface is um, pretty good and it's just a matter of the the rebars that connect up uh, within the concrete where it's sort of uh, decayed through time so just a matter of replacing that portion oh, okay. and so we've done a lot of that work and we're, we continue to do that all the way through it's just that these are the bigger larger areas that we're doing some of the repair um, we've already started some of that work on the Salt Lake portion of the H1 mm. Um, and then again, this would be the other portion. And again, a lot of it has to do with just the wear and tear and the amount of volume that travels these corridors right now. And yeah. so obviously it's a tremendous amount of cars that go to the, the leeward side. And yeah. so again, we definitely have to make sure that the roads are mm -hmm. uh, uh, replaced and repaired accordingly so that we don't have a shutdown like yeah. we did no. with the IA. Uh, Pedestrian no. overpass. We lost the pedestrian <laughs> overpass, yeah. yes. <laughs> Luckily, I wasn't in one in that <laughs> incident, yes. But I, I guess, you know, this, this is a, a, um, a space of, you know, roadway 
that is what, 30 years old? Right. I mean, you would anticipate something like this, you know, happening before a major project like this. Right, okay. absolutely. Um, and again, you know, we, we look to do the work at night, mm -hmm. so it has the least amount of impact for the motorists. Uh, there will be a substantial amount of traffic control measures that will have to be done, both um, on the freeway itself, as well as some of the uh -huh. um, adjoining streets that run underneath. Because even though work is being done at night, there's a substantial amount of work being done during the day in order oh, to okay. prep it, mm -hmm. you know, and to do the forming. They have to do it underneath the girders and kind of move forward. Um, oh, wow. So they'll be underneath that viaduct. So they'll be underneath the viaduct forming, forming. and getting everything oh. in place. So they'll be like probably, um, they have to be at least so many days ahead so that you can kind of keep moving. Mm -hmm. So that there'll, there'll be 24-7 shifts, basically, that the contractor will be working. Either working underneath it yes. or in the evening working on top of it. it. Yes. And it I was reading this, you're using some sort of new um, concrete technology. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's something that we've been using in a lot of these projects because we want to be able to get the, get the freeway open. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it's, it's a latex, elastic type of concrete that allows um, high strength mm -hmm. and it cures within three hours. Oh. So you can do that, that PM work. Right. And then open it up open for it traffic up before, the next morning. Yeah. You know, the heavy traffic starts yes. like at 4.30 yes. in the morning. Yeah, so as long as we uh, minimize the amount of vibration that we have on the freeway, which we'll be doing because, mm -hmm. again, it will be, you know, the three lanes that will be shut down and then we'll have two lanes open of traffic. It does minimize the amount of vibration that's occurring. Yeah. So we were looking at the traffic being closed for what, like? From 8 to 4 a.m. And that would happen over an 18-month period? That will, year period? so on the outbound, uh, for each outbound and inbound, we're looking at six months. Oh, okay. so six months, six months on the outbound, and then mm -hmm. another six months on the inbound. Oh, that's not that's not too yeah. bad. That's right? not too bad. Yeah, you know. Look. And a lot of the majority of the repairs on the are, are on the inner portion mm -hmm. or the center lane area wow. um, of the freeway. It's not on the outer side where you know by the, the where the rail is. It's mm -hmm. more on the the in, in inner side of the freeway. So. Oh, that's it's where a lot of, you know, you, again, a lot of the he heavy traffic because a lot of the people yeah. that are going uh, westbound, westbound are in the... Are staying in those... The, the, either the last lane as a, the, the HOV or, or the, the, one. the one right next to it because they're going further out. Oh, int that's interesting. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's kind of interesting seeing, you know, over time what fatigues quicker. Oh. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So definitely because, again, that's where the volume is and it's constant volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then this would eventually create a PM contraflow lane. Yeah, so basically the, the, the strengthening of the pavements will be done and then we will start the PM zipper. And the PM zipper still, is still in design. Mm -hmm. This project did go out as a design build. Uh -huh. It wasn't a, a low bid type of work, it was best value. Uh -huh. And so the contractor and our staff is still working on agreements to the design. You know, we were looking at safety and mm -hmm. we're looking at the traffic volumes and, and some of the value engineering components that they are providing to us. So then eventually we will see a PM oh, yes, contract flow that yes. would help. That will help. Those cars from maybe the downtown area going back home. Straight out past right. maybe uh, like a it'll, Pro City. It'll or, go past, yes. So basically right up to, um, right past the H1H2 merge. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be, that so would it's work. going all the way up uh, toward Waikele. Oh, that would yeah. that'd help a lot of people. Um, Yes, on yes, your my side, side of the yeah. island. Yes, they'd really appreciate that. I don't know how many people have asked. Can't you just reverse that zipper lane? And and this is in essence that's what we're right. We're, that's what we're, we're doing, right? To. Yeah. So um, I mean, there's other challenges that we have to look at um, because you know, again, it's going in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. um, structurally, we have to make sure that everything is intact to uh, handle that extra barrier. Should it, we have that barrier going that way? Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, just. Uh, making sure that the traffic flow kind of meets that, that same needs mm -hmm. and whether or not we have to reduce the speed or the other things that have to be looked at from a, the traffic standpoint. Yeah, because it is. I think out past um, my Pahu, it moves up to like 60. So. Yeah, it goes a little bit faster. So, yeah. you know, we, we do have to take into account some of those. And then we also have the rail that's going to be cutting across the freeway. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we are looking at some of those uh, components uh, that add to the, the oh. challenge for us to complete moving the parts yes a lot of moving parts so you know we're in heavy dialogue with heart mm -hmm. um and again because our design has not the contractor's design has not been 
uh, approved and, and finalized um, because of the dialogue that we continue to have. Uh, we cannot say how we're going to mitigate the the heart for the rail to come over. Oh, wow. Now, um, I was under the understanding that a lot of these funds came from federal funds, right? Yes. So 80% is federally funded and 20% is uh, appropriated through you know, the, the state legislature. State legislature. So this is like an $80 million project, yes. right? Yes. So I mean, that that's a positive for That's the state. That's a positive for the state, yes. Kick it off and yes. get some guys working. And Absolutely. Um, you know, again, the contractor is, is, you know, biting at the lip because they want to just physically get out there and start the work. I mean, yeah. again, it's three years in waiting, yeah. um, you know, and, you know, with the industry and, and the way things are not kind of gearing up the way we thought it would be, you know, this is a huge economic stimulus for us. It is. You know? I mean, it was it was awesome to see that. You know, yeah. eighty million dollars being pumped right into our yeah. community and guys being able to work for yes. eighteen, twenty-four months. Yes. I mean, it gets a lot of things. People happier. Yeah. People being able to do what they need to do and right, right. and perform the work they want to work. So yeah. I, I think this is a really awesome project. I kind of wanted to talk to you about um, a measure that has passed and waiting for governor's signature, which we anticipate should happen, is the feasibility study for the um, zipper lane being extended past, you know, the Waikeli area towards the Kapolei area. And how could that change, you know, the travel, you know? Um, you know, th that, that measure, Obviously, is um, governor will be approving that and mm -hmm. signing that into law, and we will be starting that feasibility study. Which, yes, it will take from Waikele going out to Palala Interchange, mm -hmm. and so we will look at what will be the best ways to handle entrances. Mm -hmm. um, so again, safety, um, volume, and all those things will have to be considered. And I think the way the current AM zipper. Um, is flowing and, and the way the, the, that we get the volumes through, I mean, it's averaging about um, 45,000 a day wow. going through there. Uh, I think it will be significant. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's sort of um, one of those things like, uh, why didn't we think about that? Yeah. You know, it's kind of one yeah. of those afterthoughts. And so, I, you know, it is a good measure mm -hmm. for us to look at and improving and getting people into town because mm -hmm. shaving 15 minutes over the long term from um, Makakilo, Kapole, um, from the Waianae area, it, you know, definitely has significance because you can't really measure 15 minutes when an accident, but then that compounds yes. significantly. Mm -hmm. So now 15 minutes actually turns out to be two hours. Yeah. I mean, it is just significant in terms of the volume that's out there once there's a, either a stall or there's an accident. Mm -hmm. And so this is one way that I, I think and we feel will help and assist in getting traffic more volume through um, the freeway. Mm -hmm. And I know being a lot in a lot of these discussions regarding this, this extension of the zipper lane, the study for it, um, we do understand that there is a cross bridge, a span over there at Waipahu, so we have to look at, you know, the, as you're saying, structure for the PM contra, right. again, structure for possibly extending the zipper lane, right? right. And then we do have the height difference going further out towards the Makakilo area with the, the landscape. So right, right. those are different things that I'm, I'm, I'm understanding that's going to have to be really looked at to see if this yes. could be feasible or not. Yeah. That, that's correct. And, and the legislature has given us, you know, to end of next year, uh, 2014 session. Yes, that's correct. To provide an assessment of that. So, you know, we are gearing up to go through the consultant uh, selection process. Mm -hmm and then trying to get the consultant on board as soon as possible. Because the key would be to get the traffic data in. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have our own numbers uh, that we take um, if the equipment is, is operable. Mm -hmm. And we do have numbers, but again, um, once the consultant can assess those, um, we can get something together and then we can run the structural and the traffic analysis that we need to do and then provide some sort of um, complete feasibility assessment. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like it can't be done, but then we right. do have to look at other what are the components again. Yes. Yeah. Like you said, a lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. Yeah, and, and something I realized this last session was, um, I guess they open up the zipper lane whenever there's a, a major accident. Right, uh, the, know, director, right? Yeah, the director has uh, taken a different approach, um, which I think has been really good for the motorists mm -hmm. that are coming in, because like we said, once there's a major accident, I mean, it's just a parking lot out there. Yeah. And so again, 
Um, although, you know, we do want to ensure the integrity of the zipper lane. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, trying to get people through the system is, yeah. is really our main function. And so um, he has allowed for those situations where it's significant yeah. that he would allow the drivers, regardless of having three or more. Yeah, it was interesting because I, I didn't even know that mm -hmm. until I was talking to another representative. They go, no, we passed that measure. And I was like, wow. Yeah. I, that's smart. I mean, that's that's the alternative thinking to right. not on a daily basis you'll do that, but right. if there's a significant accident on, you know, the freeway in the morning, right. open up that extra lane to allow yeah. the extra flow to go through. And I think that's, that's helped significantly mm -hmm. when, when we do have situations where, um, you know, we do have gridlock yeah. because of an accident. Yeah. And knowing that this is our main corridor from Yes. You know, the west side into Honolulu, and everybody talks about, well, that's the only way we have. And, you know, I, I think I was just talking to a retiree yesterday, and he, he's been retired for like two months, two years. And he goes, oh, only two times I got stuck in traffic in two years. And he goes, because now he alters his schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, you know, not telling people what to do, but sometimes it's sometimes wiser just to alter your schedule. Maybe even that 15 minutes right, right. can make a huge right. difference. Yeah, and, you know, not only looking at improvements to our system in terms of, you know, these type of PM zippers and, you know, again, these are part of our traffic management mm -hmm. improvement systems. And, you know, there's only so much we can do because we are an island state. You know, right. there's only so much land. I mean, we're not going to build another freeway yeah. or we're going to, you know, widen it eight more lanes or what have you. Um, I mean, that without taking property, yeah. um, it would be significant. So, yeah, any type of you know, different type of mechanism that people can do, mm -hmm. whether it's telecommute or, you know, like you said, you know, altering his schedule, mm -hmm. uh, that, that would be even better. And then, again, livable, walkable communities. Yes. Yeah. You know, especially with the second city, you mm -hmm. know, that's the whole main focus. Yeah. And having that and people buying into that, mm -hmm. that in itself is going to be significant yeah. because, you know, again, you know, with Coral Ridge coming online and, and Kapolei still booming out there with Ho'opili, yeah. you know, again, if those are livable, walkable communities, um, you know, that will handle a lot of that additional traffic not coming onto mm -hmm. the freeway system. Yeah, yeah. and that, I guess that's, again, all these moving components, you know, mm -hmm. how do we, you know, you know, get the, the build out of these walkable, livable communities to encourage people to shop in your community play in your community yeah. and possibly work in your community right. to alleviate, you know, the freeways or the byways. So people that have no choice that have to come right to the core, you know, Honolulu core to work, then that frees them up. You know, that uh, going forward, you know, we can all see that. Yeah. You know, that that's, is a huge challenge. Yeah, it's a huge challenge. And I think also just changing the concept with UH West Oahu being mm -hmm. out there. Yes. I think that's going to change some of the dynamic. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully that will help. In, in changing the traffic flow. Yeah, because we do know that UH Manoa is a yes. big yes. <laughs> partaker of the, the traffic as well as when school, and then that all start coming up and seeing those schedules kind of shift a little bit has helped, but yeah. it doesn't Yeah, work but everybody knows yeah. when, when, mm -hmm. when school goes back in session, it's not the school itself. It's yeah. when UH goes back in session. That's correct. That's the main component mm -hmm. that adds to the traffic, mm -hmm. and everybody knows that. Yeah. Everybody knows oh, UH is back this week. You yeah. know, so you, you, you mentally you start preparing because mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you're going to get up a little earlier yep. in anticipation of that. Because yes, when UH starts school, and uh, which they will this summer, yeah, they will. Uh, hopefully, the dynamics will change because West Hawaii will, will be open, mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe they'll take some of that load off. Yeah, so it is nice. Yeah. Well, West we'll Oahu. see how that, that, that plays out this summer. Yeah, we'll see. West Oahu <laughs> opens up in August, <laughs> yep. and it will be a four-year yes. college, so yep. hopefully that can alleviate some of the, the traffic going yeah. to Manoa. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <Yep. laughs> we'll see. But, yeah. I mean, I can remember the days when you guys did the, um, sorry, when the state did the extra lanes in that, that Pearl City corridor, mm. and they had to do the condemnation process right, of right. the those properties beneath and I mean that was a long drawn out process and we, we really don't want to see something like that because you're right we can't add two three four more lanes to these structures because right. eventually how much is it going to hold right yeah. no exactly yeah. and then again how much are we going to pay to maintain and improve it because That's right. it's just significant mm -hmm. you know and so you know having alternative routes alternative um, 
modes of transportation. Mm -hmm. um, that in itself will, will help. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think a lot of people are more um, apt to multimodal transportation now. Yeah, I they mean, are. they're looking at different modes. They're looking at, I mean, we've got the rail coming up, you know, the, the bus system. Mm -hmm. You know, we have one of the best bus systems in the world. So I think, you know, kind of playing off of that and then also with, you know, the, the bikeway systems, you know, and having people take that as a different alternative to go yeah. to work. Mm -hmm. It is. Hopefully all these little pieces can fit can together yes. and everybody changes their mindset and their patterns mm -hmm. and, and we can all go yeah. forward. I think a lot of it is just people's perception mm -hmm. and people's behavior. I mean, you know, we are, like I said, it, it is an island state. And so unfortunately, you know, we can't expand any more than we can, what mm -hmm. we currently have. And so because of that, I mean, patience. I mean, people just have to have a significant amount mm -hmm. of patience. Yep. I mean, uh, enjoy the beauty of Hawaii as you drive oh. through your corridor. I mean, I do. you know, <laughs> I think a lot of us take it for granted, but if you kind of just stop looking ahead at the next stoplight or the traffic light or the next vehicle that's in front of you per se, but actually kind of take in what the beauty that surrounds us, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, just feeling, you know, the fact that we're here in Hawaii, yep. in paradise, and and just appreciating it a little bit more than, than kind of your aggressions as you were driving through. I mean, it's a different mindset. It is. And, yeah. and if people can kind of keep that in mind, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, that's significant. And it's, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. It is. Because when you're driving through this every day, day in and day out, it, it's a significant challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's always been my set because my fellow members here in the house, they always say, well, how long did it take you to get in today? And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, two hours. And they're like, oh my God, I'm like, Hey, look, you live in Hawaii. It's a beautiful mm. place, you know, and that, that's just the mindset that I keep. Mm -hmm. You know, Nanakuli has some road work going on and it's extra 20 minutes, I get to look at the ocean. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, that's, that's what you have to look at and I always remember to put yourself in check when you right, get a little yeah. upset with the, somebody that cuts you off and the aggression. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it's just, you know, how can we change our behaviors and our mindset? And, and in the long run, it will all work. That's the way I see it, so. I know we're running short on time. I appreciate you no, joining you. me and explaining some of these projects that are coming on Fast and Furious, <laughs> and hopefully nobody gets too upset about the evening work. Um, again, thank you for joining no, me. I totally you. appreciate it. You've been such a great help. No, so thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate all your work <laughs> doing with Department of Transportation, that's for sure. <laughs> so mahalo. Thank you for joining us. I'm Representative Jordan, and we'll see you on another Jordan's Journal. Aloha. <laughs>